Here we've got two speakers in one dimension. One sits at the origin and emits sound waves. So here's a snapshot of the sound wave at, say, t equals zero. And the other speaker uh, can move along the x-axis. And as you move it along, you hear maxima. You hear a loud sound when it's at 0.6 meters and when it's at 1.2 meters. And the question is, in that situation, what is the frequency of the sound? What must be the frequency? So it's an interference problem. And you have to realize that when you hear a maximum uh, in your ear here, it's because these are undergoing constructive interference. They're in phase, basically. The maxima from this sinusoid overlap the maxima from this sinusoid. That's really what it is. So they say it's 0 0.6 and 0 and 1.2. So if we kind of draw it and think about what a maxima would look like, well, this would be exactly on top of this one, like that, when it's at 0.6. And then, if you wanted to draw it for 1.2, also, they would need to be exactly on top of each other. So if you look at that, you can kind of just visually tell the wavelength must be the difference between here and here and here and here, because we have one wave sitting in between each one. So the wavelength must be 0.6 meters. Part of the reason you can definitely say that, though, is because there are none in between. Right? You could say, well, what if there were two waves in here and it kept going? Well, then there would be two waves fitting in here and two, and then a higher wavelength here. So twice the wavelength would also give you this interference condition, except if there were twice the wavelength, then as you move the speaker, you would hear it at 0.9. It would be a maximum of 0.9 when one of those shorter wavelengths fit right here. So the fact that you don't hear any in between basically means that the wavelength has to be 1.2 minus 0.6 meters. Let's see. So once we have the wavelength, then we pull our standard trick where we say the speed is the frequency times the wavelength. So we know 340 meters is the frequency times 0.6 meters. And therefore, the answer is that the frequency is uh, 567 hertz. Okay, so anytime you're given a spacing between two interference maxima, it has to be the wavelength of the wave because one wave has to fit in between the two positions. Now, part B mixes it up a little bit, I would say. Part B says now, let's say the maxima are at 0.6 meters and 1.05 meters. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring this in uh, a lot closer, well, actually a little bit closer. I'm going to exaggerate it to illustrate the point. So let's say we brought it into here. So to make this give you Interference maxima between this wave and this wave, when you're here and here, it's still true that the wavelength has to be the distance between these two. It's the only way you can slide along and execute an entire wave between from here to here, like that. So this is the new wavelength, this shorter wave, like that. But you might see the problem now if we propagate back and you look, you'll say, okay, well, if this has to be a maximum, this must be here. It must be coming down, and now you're going to be at some other part of the phase over here. You can't have this one start off at uh, zero, I guess I should draw this. Right, so they're not starting off together anymore. Is that a problem? No. We never said they started off together in the first place. We never said they had the same phase constant in the problem. We really didn't need to. We just had to think about, to solve this, we just had to think about these two. It didn't really matter whether they had the same phase constant or not. So what you see is, if it's spaced 0.45 here and 0.6 meters here, the only way they can be constructive is if they're at a phase. The phase constants are different at these two places. And that's why it's asking you, what is the change in the phase? Okay. So to get it, so this one we could kind of intuit without writing the uh, constructive interference equation. Phases are difficult to intuit. So let's uh, write it down. So let's look at, for constructive interference, we know that it's delta x over lambda times 2 pi plus the difference in phase has to equal uh, 2 pi m. Right. So let's see. So uh, if we're talking about the difference of the two paths here, first it's going to be a 0 0.6 meter difference. So 0 0.6 over lambda times 2 pi plus the difference in phase that we're looking for equals uh, 2 pi. That would be sort of one wave out of phase, or, or, or one, you know, one cycle out of phase. Uh, but another one we could do, if 
or this one, when it's at 1.05, and you're interfering with the 1 from 0, then that's 1.05 over lambda times 2 pi plus the same phase constant. Right? Because this, remember, this is the same speaker. We're just sliding it back and forth. So the phase constant between this speaker and this speaker, it's the same. We'll call it delta phi. And this is the case where we're now two cycles out of phase. So it equals 4 pi. So here you have the magic thing that we call T2. Right? Two equations, two unknowns. So you could solve this algebraically for delta phi and for lambda. That would be kind of the hard way to do it. Because you actually know lambda. Remember, no matter what's going on with phase, if you move from one position here maximum to another position here maximum, the difference in those has to be the wavelength. So we already actually know that lambda is 1.05 meters minus 0.6 meters. We already know lambda is 0.45 meters. So then you can just plug that in to either one of those. And uh, Plug in, I did the top one, you'll get 0.6 over 0.45 times 2 pi plus delta phi equals 2 pi. And uh, let's see, uh, you get delta phi is minus 2 thirds pi. So that is the phase difference uh, between, that's the phase difference you have to have between how these waves launch at the speaker for this to work out when necessary. 